Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The mother of Jesus and his brothers came to him, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. He was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they wish to see you. He said to them in reply, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In el Evangelio de hoy, escuchamos sobre los hermanos de Cristo. Cuando dice hermanos, no está hablando sobre hermanos de realmente. En esos días, en la Biblia, muchas veces hermanos significa primos, familiares y todos esos familiares. Y cuando se acercan, Cristo dice que su madre y sus hermanos son ellos que escuchan la palabra de Dios y actúan en la palabra. Y en eso no está insultando a su familia, sino está diciendo que a veces nuestra voluntad para Dios es más importante que las obligaciones a la familia. Y eso es lo que está diciendo Cristo. So in today's gospel, we hear uh, you know, one of those famous passages that people bring up about uh, the brothers of Jesus. And of course, we know as Catholics that Jesus did not have brothers uh, in the Bible. And in many ancient languages, when you talk about brothers or brethren, you're talking about relatives, sometimes even distant relatives. We can know this for sure because uh, later on in the gospels, uh, some of these brothers are actually named as uh, sons of a different Mary. And so there's basically, you know, there's different theories about who these brothers are. Uh, obviously, as Catholics, we don't believe they were blood brothers, and of course, that's what the scriptures testify. Uh, there was a common theory kind of early in the church. It comes from the uh, apo uh, apocryphal book called the Proto-Evangelium of James, and it talks about uh, the brothers of Jesus uh, being sons of Joseph from a previous marriage. It's kind of an interesting theory. Maybe, you, maybe you've heard of this. Many people in the church, they have speculated that one of the reasons why we, hear, why we don't hear about Joseph during the public ministry of Jesus is because Joseph was already dead. And people speculate that he must have been much older. And so again, there was this document called the, the Proto-Gospel or the Proto-Evangelium of John and James, which put forth this theory that basically Mary had bowed herself to virginity as a young girl, and that as she was coming to age, she basically had to become a part of a family. So the idea was that Joseph would respect her vow to virginity and chastity, and she would basically become a member of his household. Now that theory's never been embraced by the church, and there's a number of things that can be argued against it. But that's one of the reasons, if you've ever wondered, why in a lot of the iconography of Joseph, oftentimes he looks much older right, than Mary. It comes from that uh, book, or Evangelium of James. So there's lots of different theories about this, about who exactly they are. But I don't personally believe that Joseph was much older than Mary. I think both of them were about the same age. But really the, the most perplexing line in the gospel is the last line. So the mother and brothers of Jesus come to him. And this is the line that perplexes even many of us as Catholics. People come to him and they say, Jesus, your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they want to see you. And Jesus' response is, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word and act on it. And many people, when they read this, they feel like it kind of sounds like an insult towards Mary and his relatives. What exactly is Jesus saying here? Of course, we don't believe that Jesus was actually insulting his mother. Jesus did not break the Ten Commandments, but he always honored his father. Mother. But what the church fathers said about this passage is that Jesus is basically foreshadowing something that would happen later in his life. He was preparing his mother and his relatives for the distance that they were eventually going to experience and the suffering that they would experience. Much like when Jesus was 12 years old and he remained in the temple for those three days and his parents.
parents were worried. Jesus was slowly teaching them that one day they would lose him, and that would be their ultimate cross. So he was preparing them in some ways. He was also pointing out here that part of the reason why his mother is so special is not just because she gave birth to him, it's because she, more than anybody else, listened to the Word of God and she acted on it. And finally, what the, the Church Fathers say, and I think this is something significant for all of us, is that one of the reasons Jesus said it this way is he was trying to point out that yes, his obligations to his family are very important, but they're not as important about being about his father's business. Sometimes in families, when people receive calls from God to do something, whether it's to answer a vocation or to make some risky decision, oftentimes it comes at a sacrifice to their family. But the obligations to what God is asking of us is more important than satisfying the needs and desires of our blood relatives. And this is something that many of the saints wrestle with, and many Christians wrestle with today. That even though we love our families and, and we owe so much to our families, what we owe to God comes first. 